How's it guys? My name is Vladimir Matraba, your game day cook. And today we're going to be discussing a topic that's very important to all men. And that's the game of love. Now some guys play the game of love uh, with lelemi, with their tongue and the things that they say, lyrical content. And some guys play with what they have, you know, with that material stuff, that money that they flash. I'm a very simple guy. I play it on the stove. I play with food. As we've heard it been said many a times, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. I believe that's the same for every single woman out there. So, Jitas, today we're going to be preparing something really delicious to help you in that game of love. So that if the Lemelo Jesa and the tongue fails you, you've got a backup and that backup is going to be what you feed her. And with every bite that she takes, I'm hoping she's going to love you more and more. So winning your way to this woman's heart is going to require a really delicious meal. Now I've prepared something that's really simple and really easy for any man to make. It'll take about an hour to an hour and a half to prepare. A lot of that work is going to be in the chopping and in the dicing and in the spicing. But after that, it's pretty easy. On the griddle pan, in the oven, put it together, eat it and enjoy. So the first thing we're going to start off with is our meat. Now what I've got here are some lamb cutlets. Now these are technically speaking lamb ribs. And what I've done is I've asked the butcher just to portion them for me. So you're looking at something about one to one and a half centimeters thick. And what he's done is he's exposed the bone for me so that that can actually act as a lamb chop lollipop. So what we're going to do now is we're going to spice this. Now, we're not going for something too spicy here. We're going for something that is um, flavorful, a little bit robust, but not too powerful. So what I've got just is a selection of some really interesting spices. I've got some thyme, I've got some oregano, I've got some chili flakes. And I'm going to just rub that into the meat with a little drizzle of olive oil and a little bit of lime juice just to get um, the meat cooking, you know, just to get it working together. So that's a very simple process. Once you've got your meat, you point a little bit of that thyme there, a little bit of that oregano, and a little bit of that chili. And all you want to do is literally between your fingers, just rub that into the meat. And just turn it over and do the same on the other side. A little bit of thyme, a little bit of oregano, a little bit of chili. And again, you just want to rub that in all over the lamb cutlet, making sure that you know you cover as much of it, including the bone as well. Because as that cooks, that bone is also going to heat the meat from the inside and also add to that flavor. So, a little bit of that olive oil. Just drizzle it on top there. A little bit of that lime zest. You just want to dip your fingers in it. Nothing, nothing too hectic. Because that's actually going to start the cooking process because of the acidity of the lime juice. And again, you just want to rub it in there. And like I said, you want to cover every aspect of it. You then want to add just a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper on both sides, not too much. Get that pepper in there. And again, like I said, just continue to massage the meat. Just continue to massage the meat. Get those spices, those salts, those peppers in there. Get that oil all over because you want a nice browning. And once you've done that to every single piece, you'll have your lamb cutlets ready. You want them to sit aside for about 10 to 15 minutes just so they get a little bit of that marinade running into them before you hoi them on the griddle pan and cook them up. So you prepped your lamb cutlets. The next stage is to make your coleslaw. Now there's a very simple coleslaw, it's a red cabbage coleslaw. You're going to need some red cabbage, you're going to need some celery, some carrots and some onions and some full fat or fat free yogurt. Um, for today I'm going to be using fat free yogurt because obviously you've got a date, she's trying to watch the figure and you want to help her with that. So the simple ingredients are as I said, celery, red cabbage, carrots and onion. What you want to do with the celery and the onion, you want to chop them as fine as possible. So that means getting your knife as close to the edge as possible and slicing down. I'm just going to show you how to do that quickly. What I've got here is a nice wonderful head of red cabbage. So when you want to cut it thinly, you really just want to come as close as possible to the edge and then just cut through. Nothing too thick and then you just want to cut through the half again and that will make your red cabbage ready. You're going to do the same thing with your carrots, you're going to julienne them or you can buy them julienned already. Your celery as well, you can buy it already cut into julienne strips or you can use a potato peeler and with the onions the same thing as you do with the cabbage just chop it as finely as possible I've got here a little bit of a mix that I've already made I'm going to mix it together for you 
So I'm just going to add a little bit of that cabbage in there to what's already in there. Toss it around. You want to get your low fat yogurt, give it a quick shake just so that it comes together so it's not too watery. Grab a spoon, scoop a spoonful to start off with and then you build it as you go along. A little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper and a little bit of that lime zest that you had. So just a few drops of that in there just to bring in some acidity. And then with a spoon and a fork, you just want to mix it together. As with most things, nothing's really tricky about the game of love. You've got to take it in stages, right? So the way in which you're preparing this meal is the same way you're going to approach the night. So when she arrives, make sure the place smells good, make sure the place looks good. So if you've got tranga underwear hanging on the ceiling or wherever, you know, pack it away. Alright, uh, let's do that laundry. Let's make sure the house smells good, looks good, the kitchen's neat. Because that's the first place she's going to look and potentially make judgments about you. And please, when you're entertaining and you're participating in the game of love, no sport on TV. Buffetu, this is the game day cook. And I'm telling you, you can't be watching football while you're entertaining the lady. Because uh, she's clearly going to see where your priorities lie. And uh, she doesn't need to know that until you're well and truly in there. Then you can show your true colors, especially if they're red, united. So the third stage of this dinner is going to be the roast. Now what's going to be happening in the roast is your potato and your butternut. But guys, this is not the night of the butternut. This is your first stage in the game of love. But anyway, moving on to our potatoes. Same as we've done before. You want to just cut it into wedges and that's a simple two cut process per potato. Once that's done, you just want to put them away until you've done about four or five potatoes. That's all you're going to need. You're not trying to overfill this woman. You're not trying to send her home with a pot belly. You're trying to keep her as sexy as she came in. So you only need about one potato per person, but I would make a third, fourth, or even a fifth one, depending on your appetite. And maybe you want to have something for tomorrow back at the office. Moving on to the butternut. Now, the trick to the butternut is to make sure that you cut it as straight and as true as possible. And you only want a thickness of about one centimeter, nothing more than that, because then it's going to start varying your cooking time. And these guys are going to go in to the same pan into the oven together to grow. So you just want about one centimeter. And depending on its size, you're going to have to do a little bit of work. With the butternut slices, you're only, you're only really going to need about one or two per person. So as you can see, I've got some prepared here. And what I'm going to do to them is I'm just going to drizzle them with a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of cinnamon, maybe even a little bit of sugar if you're that way inclined. Throw them in the oven and bobs your omelet. So bringing back those potato wedges that you had made, you want to put them in a pot. You want to cover them with water and you want to boil them for about 8 to 10 minutes. And this is going to allow them to soften before you put them in the oven for the grilling. You want them to look soft and spongy like. And once you've achieved that, you want to drain them off in a colander. And all you want to do with your thumb, Scott's thumb, you just want to press on them. Okay, these are not the neatest looking potatoes, but once they grow, they're going to look delicious, trust me. And then with your thyme and with your oregano, you just want to go over them again. Just want to give them a nice, friendly dusting. Well, not too much. You want to coil them with some oregano again. I love oregano. Um, most pizza places use it as part of their margarita sauce. It's one of my favorites. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Don't be stingy with the salt. And don't be stingy with the pepper. Once that's done, you just want to place them on top of baking paper in your pan. And you just want to give them a little bit of space. Remember now that you're going to be adding the butternut in there. Now don't be worried about cleaning your board again. You can just put the butternut on there. It's all flavor. And again, what you want to do here is you just want to get a little bit of cinnamon on each one. A little bit. You don't want too much because then it overpowers. And you just want to cover everybody with some olive oil so that you get that nice brown as it roasts. And once that's ready, you pop it in the oven, 45 minutes. 
Pops your uncle, your girl's gonna get going. Now we get into that part where we're starting to mix in with the heat. And like the game of love, you know, the temperature starts building between you and uh, the opposite number, uh, the young lady that's coming through tonight. So you want to make sure that you moderate your temperature and keep it consistent for as long as possible before things get too, uh, before things get too hot and go too far and next thing you know, you've ruined the day with burnt meat. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to cooking our lamb cutlets. I've got a griddle pan here. As you can see, this is uh, the instrument here. Now it's been sitting here. Um, my stove works on a not to six system. So it's been on full blast. I want that griddle pan flaming hot because once I put those cutlets on there, I want them to sear before they start cooking through. Now it's going to take about eight to 10 minutes to cook your cutlets through. It might take a little bit longer depending on how you like them. I particularly like them at a medium, uh, medium well. Some people like them extremely well done. So you just keep them cooking. Make sure just not to burn them. Add a little bit of olive oil as you go through just to make sure that that heat is regulated, that that, that meat is cooked all the way through. And like I said, you just want to watch them. You want to turn them every one or two minutes. You're going to cook them for about eight to 10 minutes. They're going to cook really quickly. The heat's going to go right through. The smoke's going to go right in. And you're going to have a really delicious piece of meat. And that's how it's going to go. The meat is rested, we've got the potatoes and the butternut in the oven, it's been cooking for about 45 minutes, so that's ready. I'm going to pull it out, I'm going to put it in front, and we're going to begin the plating process. But before I do that, just a reminder that this is the most important part of the entire game of love. This is where you're putting it together, you're going to show your masterpiece. So remember that you've got to put all of your skills into this, okay? You've got to make this plate pop. So one of the things I'm going to be putting on a plate to make it pop is some edible flowers. Now, when she asks about these, just reassure her that they're edible. You might even have to eat one first. But that's just part of making this meal, this dinner, really pop and really shine for her. The game day cook is telling you that this is important, guys. So please, jot it down. Beware of it. Always make sure that whatever you plate for your lady is something that is as attractive to see as it is to eat. So now I'm going to pull that out of the oven. I'm going to put it here. And we're going to get our plating on. our potatoes and our butternut out of the oven. So now we're going to start plating. And remember guys, this is that end game. We want this to look delicious. We want it to look presentable. So we're going to grab two lamb cutlets and you've got this bone back here. So you just want to make them rest on the bone back. So it looks like arms. Go blow bulla. You want to grab Two or three potatoes, depending on the lady's appetite. If you've uh, happened to see that she has a good appetite, you want to go for three. If she's a light eater, you just want to go for two. Then you want to grab a slice of butternut. And you just want to place that right next to it. Then you want to grab that coleslaw you made. Just give it a quick turn, just to get the juices covering everybody. And now you can really, you can really mess around here and be put there, and either plate it next to or on top of the butternut. There we go. And then, with the edible flowers and a little bit of that coriander, again, just want to give it a nice dusting. Not too many, just a few keeping your plate as clean as possible. And then your edible flowers. Now, these edible flowers also include carrot shoots as well as some rocket. So you just want to grab a nice handful. Make sure you get each and every one of the flowers. You've got some yellow flowers, you've got some red flowers. You might even get even some purple flowers. So all of this is edible. You can find these at most of uh, our local grocers, uh, especially that black one. You just want to grab a couple of those, place them between the potatoes and the butternut. And then, just want to put a nice purple one down the middle. Now there's my special friend. Jitas, I wish you a very good night. I hope you have a successful night.
And remember what the game day cook always says, guys. Play it hard and play it hard.